this uh, this takes us to uh, to RVD. RVD talking about um, a young Chris Jericho. Let's see what's going on here. Wrestlers that you wrestled that while you were wrestling, you're like, this guy's a fucking dick. Oh, fuck yeah. Name names. Yeah. <sighs> well, it used to be uh, when I first got into WWE, um, Chris Jericho. Really? You know yeah. He, We used to be friends. We used to hang out, go to the movies, whatever. Now we're in different positions in our career where he's promised the world by WWE and feeling like he hasn't been, been delivered upon. And I come in and he feels like I'm taking his place because now all of a sudden I'm beating The Rock, Steve Austin. They're giving me a mega push. And, uh, and according to uh, Paul Heyman, who doesn't mind lying he doesn't mind telling you something that's completely bullshit but he was telling me about these conversations chris would have you know about isn't it shouldn't that be my spot shouldn't they be shouldn't i be having that match and anyway they had us wrestle a lot and and through the experience of wrestling with him a lot i you know at that time i found him to be such a political bitch rvd on chris jericho you always got along with chris though right i got i got along with both those guys yeah they both sent. They both sent. You know, sent me condolences during these things. So, political is a word that you always hear. Did you say this quote? Somebody said it, and it was so great. Um. Everyone, everyone talks about. I'm going to butcher it probably. Everyone talks about the wrestling business. That's me. Until you start treating it like a yeah, business, it. and then it's it becomes a, a negative, right? It's always yeah. It's it, everybody says you know it, it, it's the business. And as soon as you treat it like a business, you're a dick. <laughs> exactly right. That was my that was my term. Yeah, because that's the truth. So the word political that you always hear that, that's like an offshoot of that. And this this has this is another bucket term. It's come to mean everything from uh, you know somebody trying to engender favoritism with the office to uh, keeping guys out of spots. I guess is that what political is? I okay. So to me, it's just like. If you're pushing to to get a spot, and it, it's you know that's I guess that's being political. Like I got you know I, I think I should be here. I think I should be here. I think I should be here. And while I was world champion, Shawn Michaels, one of my dearest friends, was lobbying on a daily basis for my spot. Mm. And the thing is that in my heart, I knew that it meant way more to Sean to fulfill his life than it did me. Like I became like the the night I became the world champion in Madison Square Garden, that was like when I when I saw my name after Super Shredder and I just went, you know, check, check. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like things did that it, I want to, did yeah that. exactly yeah. been there done. so it, yeah. yeah i mean did i did i love uh being you know being in that position you know i didn't lie I, but you know like to me like you know if if you're promising you know if you're promising you know sexual favors or something to to to, to get a spot well then yeah you that's that's you 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 know what it comes down to is I think that they, the other guy just is so like Rob's like me. Rob, like, I remember Rob and I, I don't know what happened, but for some reason, I think I said something that, that, that didn't particularly go well with the office in WWE and Rob did the same. And we went around the horn for like a month and a half, two months. And it was me and Rob versus Triple H and Ric Flair, and they took turns beating one of us each night. <laughs> and it, it, I, I don't know if it was supposed to be like, uh, like, you know, like neither one of us. We were just like, I don't remember. Like, it's like we're we're like in one of the top matches on the card, and we're all getting paid. Like all four of us are getting paid the same. Like we're, I'm cool with that. You know, mm -hmm. as long as I'm getting paid, I, I, I'll, I, I'll do a job. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah. You know, I remember, um, 
from one of our you shoot shows from kayfabe commentaries you shoot i'm asking steve on the message now to find the clip we can play i authorize it we can play it um was I going to get us demonetized because I played a clip from another show? I don't know. But he talks about, you know, he famously asked Taz to pick a hand before he smacked him in the face. And um, so we played a game, Pick a Hand, where we brought up a name. And, if, and we wanted Rob to tell us if there was ever a time where that person might have been asked to pick a hand or, 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 or he wanted to. And, and I believe, well, we'll see it on the clip now. McMahon was a was a pick a hand, and maybe this maybe this is the actual story about what he did to 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 lose some shine with the office and have to alternate job with you throughout the country to Hunter and uh, who was it? Hunter and who? Rick Flair. and Flair. Okay. So uh, Steve, are you able to find that? It, it's uh, it should be from a YouTube. It should be called RVD Pick a Hand on You Shoot, and. Uh, <clears throat> I want to hear what the McMahon pick a hand was because I think I, I decided to leave him. Okay, here we go. I was thinner. My hair wasn't as gray. What a dick. But I think in this, for you, we're going to call it pick a hand. Um, who in the day uh, would have been told to pick a hand? I think you, this you video has cable vision. Uh, when Rob confronted it's very Taz, choppy for me. told him to pick a hand before he hit him with it. So who would have been told to pick a hand? Uh, back in your, I know you're in a different place now. We got the preamble, but I need to know who would have come up on the uh, on the on the bad side of a uh, RVD confrontation in a locker room. We already got the Taz story, so I'm going to skip him. Bob Holly. Bob Holly, I've had nothing but uh, respect. For okay, uh, Bubba Ray. Bubba Ray would have had to pick a hand at one it, time. It could have. I mean, we had the kind <laughs> of tension that could have possibly ended up in in a backstage confrontation okay. it never it never did you know but we would punch the punch we would straight up back and forth punch each other in the face hard almost every night in the ring it'd be like bam receipt bam bam he was getting bam, so close to me right forth, there back uh, and it forth. was unbelievable it, it, expecting the other guy to back down and we had that kind of wow. you know yeah uh, uh john cena Okay. Uh, Shane McMahon. Uh, no. JBL. JBL could have possibly. He picked a hand. He could have back in the day. He never did anything personal to me, but back in the day, his vibration bothered <laughs> me um, because he's, you know, he was a bully. <laughs> And I would see him bully like Rene Dupree a lot. And um, whoever thought he could get away with it, he was a loudmouth Texan and he would like be disturbing and cut right through the piece. So even though he didn't do anything to me, um, I was bothered uh, because my, I couldn't, I couldn't uh, be zenful and vibrate <laughs> the, at RVD's pace while there's someone over there going, oh, hell yeah, hell yeah, hey, how about that, hey, how about that? hell yeah. <laughs> and I would just, a lot of times I would get my boots and I'd pick him up and I would just walk out and I'd say, I'm gonna go fucking dress in the hallway. And, and um, I don't even know like if he ever picked up on any of that. I don't, I don't remember, I mean, there was, he might have. It seemed like, but I don't. I mean, there was never, you know, like anything building. And yeah. I and I'm and I feel strongly that he wouldn't, that he would be passive in that in that. But I do remember like Paul Heyman one time saying, uh, you know, who you riding to the town with? You know, you should get in the car with me and uh, John. I'm like, how the fuck do you ride with that guy? Come on. But I'm a loner, and Can I wouldn't you imagine, expect anybody you to been, be able to ride with me either. You, you know? would have been wrestling legend if you walked up to JBL in the locker room and said, listen. I'm no longer centered. You've destroyed my zen with your Texas accent. Pick a hand so I can punch you in the fucking face. Well, here's the You'd thing, be bro. legend. You know who did? Hitting someone for destroying Joey your Styles zen. Joey Styles did it for me. When Joey Styles knocked JBL out, I mean, it's like a how do you one. recover yeah. from that psychologically? I mean, Joey Styles just knocked you the fuck out. You know what I mean? Much like the pick a hand to Taz, I feel like there was a bully that needed to be, you know, but it was cool. I mean, you know, he's very humble now. Yes. Now that he's commentating and putting yeah. the shit over that he can't do, you know, he's, he's like, Ooh. no, I'm just saying, yeah. Yeah. who can do RVD no. shit? Come on. No, I hear he you. puts me over strong, like, wow, and, and he probably is impressed. Come on, I'm 44 and I'm still flying. Who's not impressed? Except New Jack. 
except New Jack, who's not impressed. <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, he's, he meditates now, JBL, I think. And that's probably oh, cool. where he found some of the groundedness. Raven. Mm, no. I remember getting hot at him one time overseas. It was like a real short moment where, uh, where I was mad at him. And, <laughs> and, uh, and it, mm, it, it didn't, it was a one-sided heat. So it wasn't like, you know, you're like, so I wrestled him in, was it Portugal? It was somewhere overseas. And he, he some before the match, like, when I, whenever I would try and... Steve just informed me this is the 18-minute segment. Talk yeah, about is it, and can I, and you I find just, Vince for me? I was frustrated. Bring it up. And uh, he blames it on something else. <laughs> I, it, it, while he does that, if that's not an absolute 100% reason why you should smoke cannabis... To hear a cat say, man, like, he just would, like, just basically just barge through my zen. Yeah. <laughs> I can't be like, zenful. Yeah, it's like, I, I, I love him, man. He, he is just, he's the best. Yeah, he's the he's absolute. A, he's a good dude. And it was just like, like, when you put, when you're going to punish two guys, and they're both like the most just cavalier two casts on earth. It's just like, all right. Yeah. Rob's pretty chill. I mean, you know, oh, to, yeah. to, to, to piss him off, you have to go. Uh... Rob's good for like the random text too, like at about four in the morning, my time. He's in Vegas, so it's one. Four in the morning, I'll get a text. He's like, just to remind you to turn off your, turn off your sound when you go to sleep. Yeah, thanks, Dick. Do it anyway. Did you come across? Okay, here's the Vince. You know, that was the end of it. Vince so. McMahon. He could have got one. Could have got one. <laughs> I thought about it. I actually thought about saying, okay. take a hand. One particular instance? Fuck yeah. And I got nothing but respect for Vince McMahon. He's always treated me with respect. And um, and that's been our relationship. Not that I know him real well. I've never really bonded. I've had very few... Uh, lengthy conversations with them. And uh, one of them was about going overseas and entertaining the troops. So when I got to WWE in 2001, first off, adjusting to that monotonous, never-ending schedule and the politics both made me not want to be there. I would call my wife sometimes the first year that I was there, and I'd say, if you don't talk me out of it, I'm going to the airport, I'm fucking coming home right now. Like, I'm fucking going nuts, I hate it, you know, and it was like dealing with, like I said, the politics, and then just, it was nonstop, it's boom, 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 boom. Anyway, what, what I found to inspire me to continue was in December, like two months away, we're gonna have 10 days off. I can make it till December, I can make it till December. Finally, we get there, and it's like two weeks before we're gonna have these 10 days off, and they had this big meeting, we're going to go overseas on our, on our vacation and entertain the troops. And uh, they said it's going to be a voluntary, you know, but they expect us all to go. I was like, have a good trip. I'm not going. And, um, and then uh, so I had to talk to Vince afterwards. Vince like, Rob, I uh, appreciate your, uh, you know, your thoughts on this. Okay, cool. Thank you. But I think you're going to see this is one of the uh, best experiences of your life. I said, you no, you don't understand. I'm not going. He says, well, I hear you, Rob, but you should talk to some of the other wrestlers about, you know, I said, Vince, it, it, I, I am so sober now. The last thing I want to do is, is go to the desert and, and spend my time, you know, dodging bullets. It's not even, it wasn't political. It wasn't about uh, me not supporting the troops. It was about... I hate Mental health. traveling. <laughs> Mental I health. I be home so yeah. bad. And, and the last thing I wanted was, you know, to spend right. my time. Sure. And since they said it was volunte volunteering, I said, no, I'm not going. It became a really big deal. All the boys would come up to me and say, man, I wish I could get away with saying no like you. I don't want to go. I said, what do you mean? I don't have it in my contract that I can have balls. I'm just saying I am not going. Should have been it. But Vince was persistent. And, uh, and, they, and, you know, and, there was, and Johnny was telling me that Vince was expecting me to go. And it got to a point where I was waiting for him outside of his office one day and I had to talk to him. And I had, in my mind, pick a fucking hand. Because I was so offended. Because I've already told you, 
and maybe I didn't say it clear enough, but I am willing to accept any consequences. Fire me, find me, whatever. I'm telling you, man to man, you will not see me mm -hmm. on that flying warehouse with no seats or whatever the fuck people. It's a, it sounds horrible what people talk about, but anyway, you, I am not doing that. And if this guy thinks he has so much power and control over me that he can actually physically cause me to not be in my home and he's got that so i was so offended i was thinking of telling him to take a hand wow. and, and, and uh there it is paul Heyman told me not to he said that would be a mistake yeah <laughs> well yeah <clears throat> so maybe maybe that maybe that was the result uh, that was a result of his not going overseas did you ever do one of those tours because mm -hmm. it was no. voluntary I, I just I wasn't working for the company when I went. I was scheduled to go to Kuwait, but then I went to yeah. I, I went to uh, WCW. Right, not because of that, obviously. No, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could just imagine. What are the accommodations? Are you staying in a in a hotels? Or like, what, where do they put you? No, oh, yeah, dude, you're on. Those are. Uh, those are you are in green. barracks? Are you in Yeah, like, you're in green oh. zones. Yeah, you're in green zones. Can you take would you be able to pack your chili sleep mattress topper to go to Kuwait for your for your cot, maybe? No. No. They wouldn't no. let you do that. I don't think so. 